This video will show you how to complete the blood buffer worksheet. In the worksheet, you are required to explain the four abnormal pH conditions in terms of simple acid based chemistry, the Chatelier's principle, and the buffer equation. First, we'll look at the summary section. For respiratory acidosis, the pH is, well, it's too low because we're in an acidic state. Next, which system is in the normal state? Well, respiratory is in the tidal, so that means the respiratory system is causing the, the acidic environment. So the normal, the system that is in the normal state is the metabolic system. The bicarb is normal. So the next question is, what is abnormal, and that is the respiratory system. And for the respiratory system to create an acidic environment, remember the lungs control the acid. So the CO2 must be too high. And the other system, the metabolic system, is going to compensate for this problem. So we can get rid of those first two choices. So what would make sense? Would the metabolic system increase the bicarb, which is the base? Or would it make sense for the metabolic system to decrease the base? Now the pH is already too low. If we if we decrease the base, we learned before that you'll set up an acidic condition if you decrease the base. We're already too acidic, so one needs to conclude that we should not decrease the base. We need to increase the base to offset the increase in the acid. So what we've just completed is the summary for respiratory acidosis. You could use this summary to address the other three questions. So we'll continue to address respiratory acidosis. Deal with the first one, acid-base chemistry. Use words such as acid, base, pH, and hydrogen ion. Explain how an increase or decrease in the acid or base affect the concentration of the hydrogen ion and the pH. Okay, the abnormal state is that we have too much um, CO2. So type something like CO2, which is the uh, acid, identified as the acid, is too high, which causes the H plus to be too high, which therefore causes the pH Oops, the pH to drop. That's it. And for the compensation, using the summary, we determine that the bicarb, the HCO3 minus, will, uh, which is the base, what identified as the base, needs to increase to offset the increase in the acid, and that will make the H plus drop, therefore the pH to increase back to where it should be. Now I'll explain respiratory acidosis in terms of Le Chatelier's principle. Use phrases such as increase the forward rate of reaction or increase the reverse rate of reaction. Explain how the rate change affects the pH and the concentration of the hydrogen ion. Well from our summary we concluded that the CO2, the acid, is too high. Well let's take a look at the reaction up here. If there's too high a concentration of carbon dioxide that will cause the forward rate of reaction to increase. 
So we'll type that in. If forward rate of reaction increases, there will be an increase in the hydrogen ion concentration. So if there's an increase in the hydrogen ion concentration, the pH will decrease. Now we'll deal with the compensation. Well, from our summary, we concluded that the bicarb should increase. If the bicarb increases, that's going to increase the reverse rate of reaction. Using the Chatelier's principle, we can see if we, if we add bicarb to the system, it will cause the reverse rate to increase. If that occurs, that will consume the hydrogen ion and that will cause the pH to increase. So an acceptable answer for Le Chatelier's principle would be as follows for the abnormal state and the compensation. Now we'll address respiratory acidosis with the buffer equation. Remember the buffer equation is the pH is equal to the pKa, in this case the pKa is taken to be 6.41, plus the log of the ratio of the conjugate base, in this case the bicarb, over the weak acid, which is this carbon dioxide. So first you divide this fraction, then you take the log of that number, and you add that to 6.41. For a normal state of bicarb, use 10, and for the normal state of CO2, use 1. Because if you enter 10 over 1 into this fraction, take the log of 10, you'll get 1, and 1 plus 6.41 will be 7.41, which is a healthy pH. So we're going to assume a 10 to 1 ratio to be a normal ratio between the bicarb and the CO2. Now I'm going to use 10 over 2. 10 for bicarb because that's supposed to be in the normal state. And 2 for CO2 because it's supposed to be higher than normal. You could use any number you want for carbon dioxide as long as it's above 1. You could use 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. But 2 is a good enough number because when you calculate the pH using 10 over 2, you'll calculate a pH of 7.11, which is too acidic. As we said before, the kidneys will compensate by increasing the bicarb. But we're going to leave the CO2 at 2 because it is abnormal. And that means we have to change the bicarb to try to offset this increase in acid. As we said, the bicarb will increase and we're going to use 20 because if we use 20 we'll get the 10 to 1 ratio back and if you calculate the pH now it'll be 7.41